So in this video, I'm gonna test the Apple Pencil against some of the much cheaper alternatives to see whether you really need to invest in the full official Apple Pencil or whether the other options are actually will do just as good for you. The first Apple Pencil, the Apple Pencil 1, came out with the first iPad Pro, and it really took the use of a stylus and creating art on the iPad to the next level. Having said that, I used to use, before the Apple Pencil 1, I used to use a Wacom stylus. Now, it did have a large rubber tip, so it kind of didn't feel super precise, but it did have pressure sensitivity, but it required a battery, and it was a really unusual size battery, and just, yeah. It was possible to create really refined pieces of work using that stylus, but when the Apple Pencil 1 came out, it was just a game changer. I gave up using things like Photoshop, it just wasn't necessary. You could draw with super accuracy straight onto the screen, so it's been brilliant. But not everyone's need in a stylus is going to be equal or the same. Now, I've done comparisons between the Apple Pencil 1 and the Apple Pencil 2, which you can see linked. In terms of how they draw and paint, they are the same. Tilt, accuracy of line, or whether it's pressure sensitivity, the Apple Pencil 1 and the Apple Pencil 2 are gonna be the same, but they're not cheap. It has to be stated that they are not cheap. Now, I've broken a couple, I've lost a couple more, so when I really start totting up the overall cost that I've had to endure because of Apple Pencils, yeah, I don't even like to think about it too much, but it's been a lot. Currently, the Apple Pencil 2 is £139 in the UK and $129. If you buy it brand new from Apple, there are deals out there that I'm sure you can get it cheaper. You could even buy it secondhand, buy it used, and maybe you can save yourself a little bit of money too. And for the Apple Pencil 1, it's $99 and £109. So even the Apple Pencil 1 is quite steep, really. It's quite an investment. So I guess the question, the point of this video is to look at some of the other options. Are there any options that can actually stand up to the tasks, to the requirements that you may have for a stylus? And if it's not entirely the same, if it doesn't offer all of the same features, how good are they? And could they be a good alternative for you? So the first option you might consider is the Logitech Crayon. Now, it is officially kind of recommended and approved by Apple. It's on the Apple site, as are a lot of Logitech products. It's pitched as a cheaper alternative. Now I say cheaper, it's £69.95 in the UK, and it's actually $69. 95 as well in the US. Now it's a quite you know solid design. It feels nice in the hand. It's a good weight. It fits quite ergonomic. It feels comfortable. And it's something you can imagine shoving in a bag and being a good alternative in terms of the physicality of it. Now it says it's on the box. It's good for taking notes, for signing documents, sketching and drawing. Good for traveling. And it's also suitable for younger people. It says kids of over five, five plus. But I don't think that means that you're limited to only using this for writing or children's drawing. Now, it doesn't necessarily come with all the same features. Now, first thing to note is that it, by default, it will be off. So there is a power button, you have to switch it on and off. So unlike the Apple Pencil, which, for example, in the Apple Pencil 2, it just magnetically connects on the top and you just lift it off and it's good to go straight away. This has to be charged. And this is the, the original version of the Logitech Crayon, which requires a lightning plug. There is an updated version that uses USB-C, but otherwise it's, it looks pretty much exactly the same. But yeah, by default it's switched off, so you have to long press, and then a little light will appear, a little green, yellow light, and then you're good to go. So you do need to have a charger in order to charge it up, and that might be a layer of complexity and irritation that puts you off it straight away. It's not necessarily something that would bother me, depending on how I would want to use it. I suppose an advantage in a way is that it doesn't need to be paired and connected via Bluetooth in that sense. It requires a battery, but yes, it doesn't need pairing. Now in terms of the accuracy, it's as good and as accurate as the iPad, or sorry, the Apple Pencil. You know, you really feel like it's coming straight out of the end of the nib, and it's exactly as you'd want, and yeah, it's really good. So if what you're wanting to do is just line work and, and maybe some sketching, so for example, I'm on the 6B pencil, I've set my size, and maybe turn it back, dial it back from the 100%, put it a little lower down, and I want to go over and over and over an area, I can build up the darkness, with like cross hatching, and I can still get shading techniques, just because it doesn't have pressure sensitivity that you get on the Apple Pencil doesn't mean that you can't build up tone and shade. Now that's fine with something like a pencil, but that won't necessarily be as good if you use something like the soft brush. So I'll put it on soft brush, turn it back down to 50%-ish again, and you can see it's pretty full on at 50%, and I can certainly double it up, and I can make 
these kind of effects, but it's not going to be quite as good. And I guess if you can turn it down, maybe a little lower on the opacity, you know, you can start to build up a kind of sketching look, but it's not going to be quite as effective, I'd say, as one of the pencil brushes. So yes, it doesn't come with pressure sensitivity, which I guess is the big reason why you might want to get the Apple Pencil over this. But it is accurate. And if we go back to something like the sketching 6P Pencil, we've got the accuracy, but we also have a tilt. So if you tilt your Logitech crayon and maybe turn the strength up, tilt it on its side and you get a completely different look and shading than you do when you hold it more upright. So maybe the combination of the two will enable you to kind of soften transitions again. And there might be another way that you can create a gradient. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty good stylus to be honest. I mean, I guess at nearly $70, 70 pound, you're getting towards the same kind of cost as the Apple Pencil. And although it's really durable and straightforward to use, I think there's a couple of drawbacks, as in the fact, you know, to charge it, you need to plug it into a wall adapter. I guess you could get a, get a connector from your iPad to fit there to the Lightning or the new one, the USB, but it's not quite as convenient as just clicking it onto the top of the iPad. So it definitely loses some points in terms of ease of charging and it doesn't have pressure sensitivity, which is a big factor of the Apple Pencil. But yes, it's a good stylus. So if you are predominantly doing line work and you're doing sketching, drawing like this, and the pressure sensitivity isn't that much of a factor and you could work around it, then it might be a really good option where you're saving $60, kind of roughly almost half the price in the US. And yeah, it might be a good option for you. Personally, I still would always get the Apple Pencil, even if I had to get a used one. I think I would prefer that option. Now in doing the research and looking at all the possible options, I'm looking at a full range of alternatives to the Apple Pencil. And one of the options that I found was really super cheap and just a totally different take on what you might require is the pen year. Now, I guess one of the selling points of this particular stylus or pen option is that it has multiple uses. So within the box, we have a little protective case, which is quite pleasant. It's got like a leather feel and it's got an engraved pennier on it. And then we have the instructions that tell you about all the different nibs and the ways that you can alternate the different uses. And then we have some of the different nibs here that you can actually use on it. And then a replacement ink cartridge there too, because that brings us to one of the main advantages of this is that it has a traditional ink pen, a rollerball ink pen. So it just screws in there. And that brings me to one of the the real advantages of this, I suppose, is that it, it is a quite a nice feeling pen and to write with is quite pleasant. And it comes with its own protective case that you could simply just slot it in there, drop it in the bottom of your bag or pocket. And because it's in here, it's not going to leak any of the ink into a pocket when you get warmer. And yeah, it's just quite nice, quite a nice item to carry around with you. But what are the advantages? And it isn't the little diamond effect on the end of the pen. That's not what would sell it to me but we have other things so for example we have a, a fiber tip on the end which without any charging works straight away now you need to have it set so your ipad will respond to finger gestures which you may have noticed have been accidentally sort of marking the screen now it's generally something when i'm using the apple pencil i'll disable but for the use of something like this which is purely capacitive then you need that ability to use your pen, your finger rather, switched on. And it's a really, it's almost like a microphone, it's metallic. So anywhere that it makes contact, it will enable you to make marks. It really is able to glide over the, the screen and it responds very easily and very rapidly to any gestures that you make. And again, you know, you could, I guess, build up shading this way with a pencil cross hatching of some sort. You can build up the sketching effect like that, but it offers more than that too, because there is an, another screw point here and it's got a, a little disc. Now there used to be the Adonit styli where they would have this feature too. And it just allows you to see it a bit more accurately. Excuse me. It allows you to see a little bit more accurately. You can see it's transparent. You've got a sharper point. It's almost like using this end of the pen, but with a little disc to protect the screen so you're not scratching it obviously, but it just allows you to feel you're being a bit more accurate. Now, let's be clear, this is not as accurate as it could be. So if I draw a small circle and you aim for the middle, it 
it doesn't go in the area that you would expect it. It kind of offsets it quite predictably, quite a lot. And if I actually aim for the center, it's not easy to get it quite as accurate as I would like. It's inconsistent. But again, you can screw the pen back together in a different form. And maybe for writing, this is a bit more comfortable or just the feeling that you're being a bit more precise with the nib. And definitely you're gonna be a bit more precise with this rather than this fiber tip. So it really does give you some options. Now, as well as those, you've got a rubber tip, two different shapes, one more rounded, one with a slight more point on it, and then you've got like a microphone furry one, which I can't imagine why you'd want to use that one, but it's there anyway. And then you've got a replacement for this disc as well. Now, one of the main drawbacks, I think with the pen yeah, is that it doesn't have palm rejection. So if you put your palm on and you're trying to draw, it just doesn't like it. And you really have to just kind of hover it and draw on it separately from your hand. As soon as you place your arm down, it starts glitching. Yeah, and it's, it's just doing all sorts of messy, inconvenient things there, which, you know, sometimes it'll work and then other times it'll glitch horribly. So it's very inconsistent. So there you go. It doesn't have palm rejection. So yes, it's not going to be, for me anyway, something that I would seriously consider as an alternative to the Apple Pencil, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be that for you. It depends really. If you want to take notes on electronic devices and that is your use, then this is probably gonna do everything that you need it to. If you're not an artist, you're not looking for pressure sensitivity, you're not looking for tilt, and you don't want to have to charge it, and you want to use it across maybe multiple devices, then this is actually a really great, I mean, I mean, I'm surprised that I'm saying it, it is a surprise to me, and I'm quite pleased with the product, and it's something that I'm gonna perhaps even consider taking around with me and using as an additional item to the Apple Pencil, but not, for me, as an artist, not a replacement or a serious alternative, but it's very cheap. And if money is an issue, and you have a limited use really for what you need from an Apple Pencil, this is, is actually a pretty smart little purchase for your money. It has limitations, no pressure sensitivity, no palm rejection, no tilt, but it is an all round great pen, I would say. And at a pinch, a sketching device. Another stylus that I've looked at is the Sanfant Pencil for iPad. Now this is something that needs charging. So within the case, I'll just open it here. You've got the user manual, you've got the pencil itself, and you have a couple of replacement nibs there, as you can see. And then within the packaging, you also get an, a charging cable, which is a USB-C to USB. So that means that you will need to charge it. So yeah, I guess this is convenient enough. It's with a, a little adapter, you could take this round and charge directly from your iPad. Now it does have a little power button here. So if we press that, you see a little blue light appears and then you should be good to go. And again, instantly straight off the bat, we get that super nice interaction with the screen and straight away on this brush, I can see it has tilt and quite nice actually, quite a decent tilt responsiveness. And I'll just test that out thoroughly and see how much of a, a gradation it, it will give me. So let's start it here. I'm gonna gradually increase the tilt but you know what, that's pretty good. So yes, the tilt is pretty good on this. It feels quite similar to the official Apple Pencil. It has a flattened edge, which gives you the benefit of at least connecting it to your iPad. Now it won't pair, it won't charge from there, but it allows you to store it on the iPad, but you will remember to, you have to remember to switch it off, obviously, before you do that. Otherwise your battery is just gonna run down. So yeah, it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. This is gonna be a very repetitive kind of theme as we run along these styluses. Now it is pretty responsive. It almost has a sharper nib than the actual Apple Pencil. So I guess in a way it exposes the fact that it has a slight lag, but I'm not sure in reality it has any more lag than the actual official Apple Pencil. It's pretty responsive. It's just the fact that it has a very sharp nib just enables you to see the slight gap between the line and the nib itself, but it's so minimal, you have to almost peer at it from an angle in order to see that lag and delay and that gap. So yeah, it feels a little bit lighter, I dare say, than the actual official Apple Pencil, but very, very similar in feel. And you've got replacement nibs, and it's quite a nice product. Now this product is £19.99, 
and there's a link for that down in the description. I'm not sure whether it's available in the US, but you know, you're gonna find products that are almost identical to this in theme and in productivity. So almost 20 pound, 20 pound pretty much, it's actually a pretty decent alternative. I think that you could, with the tilt, and with the palm rejection, and the accuracy, and the convenience of the USB-C charging, I think that this is a really good alternative. So in terms of the, the saving of costs, well, the Apple Pencil 2 is £139 in the UK. So this is almost £120 less. And if I broke this, if I lost this, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to cry quite as much over the loss and having to, you know, incur the cost of replacing this. It's not quite as catastrophic as losing the official and expensive Apple Pencil. So yeah, it's a really nice alternative, actually. Okay, so this one is the Lazon, or Lezon, and it says it's compatible with smartphones, tablets, and other touchscreen devices. So let's see why that might be the case. Again, we've got a very familiar feeling stylus. It looks and feels very similar to the Apple Pencil. It has a little replacement nibs and the protective cover, which is quite nice. So there's two nibs in there. I don't know whether you can see, but there are two, plus a protection, plus a lead, and it's a USB-C. Uh, there is a little, it took me a while to figure out what this was, <laughs> longer than it probably should have done, but it's a little protective cap, and no doubt I'm going to lose that straight away, but it enables you to just, you know, keep the dust out. Maybe it's just while it's being shipped, because I'm not going to be able to keep track of that, but there you go. It's there anyway. So this plugs in. It feels nice. doesn't work unless you switch it on. Oh, so let me just see if there's a reason why this might not be <laughs> as accurate as I'd expect. But this is £15.59, and, and you know it's going to be roughly similar in dollars, but it's not accurate. Instantly, it's just not putting the line where I imagine it to, which is unfortunate. It's not got any tilt, and it very clearly doesn't have palm rejection too. It's glitching all over the place. It is switched on, but it's glitching. It's not doing what it should in terms of palm rejection. Uh, just to be clear, it doesn't advertise that it has that, but yes. It, it isn't accurate, it isn't lined up where I would expect it. And I think in some ways it's even worse than the Penier, which is purely capacitive. I think that actually it's really irritatingly, <laughs> try and draw a circle for one thing, it's just difficult to close the line. And then line up, I'm trying to do a dot in the center. There you go, kind of did it. Maybe at certain angles, if you hold it certain ways, I'm trying to get a line, a dot in the center, yeah. Basically this isn't working. Very glitchy, no palm rejection no tilt, and it, it feels inaccurate and laggy. I mean, testing it now, it feels a little bit better, but, you know, based on my my experience of it just now, it's, it's clearly not consistently accurate. So that's a no, I'm afraid, compared to all the other stylus that I've just tried, I think, and especially compared to the Apple Pencil, it's very cheap, but if it isn't doing the job properly, then it doesn't matter how cheap something is. Not good, I'm afraid not fit for purpose, and I definitely would not recommend this. Okay, this one is the Quadrance Advanced Stylus. That's what it's called in the box, so let's have a look and see just how advanced this actually is. We have the stylus, nice rubber protection there. There you go. It doesn't have a flat edge, interestingly. Most of the other options that we've looked at have a flat edge that enable it to magnetically connect, not pair, but make contact at least and attach, whereas this doesn't have that. And in terms of the cable, eek, it has a micro USB. Not a fan, but there you go. And attached to the cable, we have two replacement nibs, which is good, I suppose. So let's have a look. So it should work once we switch it on. So here's a button, a little blue light comes on, and that's nice. So accurate. Compared to the previous stylus I've just used, that's doing exactly what I would wish put in the circles, in the dot, in the, put in the dots in the circles rather. Perfect. So in terms of accuracy, I like that. It has tilt. And let's test that. Yeah, pretty good. Do a more of a gradient, gradually tilting that. That's pretty nice. So a nice tilt, good accuracy. It feels quite nice. It feels somewhere between the Apple Pencil 1 and Apple Pencil 2. It's fully rounded, but it's not quite as slippery. It has a little bit more of a matte finish, which is quite nice. Got replacement nibs, apart from the micro USB, which I'm not a fan of, it's pretty good. But the question is, where does it charge? Because unlike the others that would charge from this point, that has a button, well, it has a cap. So in some ways, it's quite similar to the Apple Pencil one, except in reverse. 
and you just need to plug in your micro USB and then you can plug in the other end to any USB charging point and that's pretty good. However, there is an extra feature you may have noticed on the cap. So let's say it's run out of charge. Oh dear, useless, but not quite because we have the fiber tip kind of mesh on the other side and you can still be productive even when you run out of charge. So it happens. I remember this quite a lot with the Apple Pencil 1. Now, please bear in mind, this end of the, of the uh, stylus doesn't have palm rejection like the other side. So you're gonna have to hover this. It definitely has limitations why it's not really meant as the main point, but what a great idea as a backup for when it's not charged. If you're not near a plug and it's not convenient, then at least you can still be productive in some way. Now that's 19.99 pound. So again, you know, it's, it's very reasonable, a good saving of 120 pound and not a bad little option. Quite nice, feels nice, nice little clicky button, quite attractive, really quite like the, the backup option of the fiber mesh. If that's something that you, you can imagine yourself needing, then that, that is pretty cool. It's accurate, it has palm rejection when it's switched on and charged, it has tilt, but obviously we're lacking pressure sensitivity and it cannot pair. It doesn't need to pair, I suppose, is the argument there, but it can't charge or pair and it doesn't have pressure sensitivity but it does all the other things pretty well. So yeah, I, I could recommend this stylus. I think that's quite nice. So this again is a slightly simpler version than the Quadrance Advanced Stylus. So it says um, it's a slightly simpler version of that. So let's have a look at it. So again, we've got a rounded stylus, but this does interestingly have a flat edge, which means that you can at least connect it, attach it, so yeah, I actually do quite like that little flat edge. It's a really good place for me personally to put my thumb and it just gives me a little bit of a better grip, I would say. Now, interestingly, the charging uh, cable is quite different, quite unique. So we have the typical USB, but we don't have a little slot where we can plug in a USB-C or a micro USB or even a lightning port. It's completely kind of sealed, but that's why we have this. Really quite interesting. It just sits on there like a little cap and there you go it kind of clicks in i quite like that in a way really quite strange if it breaks you're a bit stuck because yeah i think you'd have to go back to the manufacturer probably just replace the stylus if you break the cable i imagine but this is 15 pound 99 so at that point you know you know you might not want to have to replace it but if you careful and look after the cable it's probably going to last you quite a while and that's that's not bad value really when you consider all things so how do you turn it on? Well, it's got a nice little clicky thing at the top. This metal bit is a little clicky and you've got a blue light that comes on once you've pressed it. Let's move the Apple Pencil. And yeah, it's it's a pretty consistent thing really. The ones that, that actually do it as they should, which is the most of these I've actually looked at, they do it really well. Really accurate, do small shapes and little points in the middle of a circle go exactly where you'd expect them to. So very accurate. Let's test the tilt. Very nice, good tilt. So it's got the accuracy, it's got the tilt, and let's test the palm rejection. Yep, it's got the palm rejection. So unlike the advanced one, it doesn't have a fiber tip option. So you're stuck with this, and if it runs out of charge, well, it's tough luck. But it does what you'd kind of want it to pretty well, actually. And I think for the money, if all you want is sketching and drawing with a pencil-like effect or writing, taking notes, you know, you could at a pinch with all of these switch to something like, I don't know, a textured brush. So if you use a painting brush, a wet acrylic, choose a color, brush size, and an opacity that suits, you know, you can build up and you can use the opacity and keep going over things. And you can probably build up gradients without pressure sensitivity you obviously won't get the, the changing brush size. So something typically with an inking brush like the studio pen, where are you? There you are. Um, usually with that brush, you press on more and it gets bigger and wider and then it thins out at the end to a, a taper, a point. But obviously without the pressure sens sensitivity, you're not going to get that at all. Which, you know, if that's something that's important to you, then that's going to be a major problem. But other than that, it does it really well. And at £15.99, it's a good little stylus. But the drawbacks, it doesn't charge very conveniently. It's got a weird little cable. It doesn't have pressure sensitivity. So yeah, it's limited. But 
for what it does. I think it does it quite nicely, actually. Another option for £20 is the KXT, so it's a hexagonal design. So it's much like, I mean, it's much thicker than a standard kind of drawing pencil, as you'll have a look. But it has the, the kind of old school feel of a, a pencil that you might actually sharpen with a sharpener. So it has varied flat edges, which feels quite nice. It gives you a nice grip. As you can see in the box, it has a USB-C, which plugs in quite straightforwardly there. It has a power button, a little blue light appears. Let's test it. Nice. Let me go back to my sketching, 6B. Yeah, it's the accuracy I would expect. It's no lag, accurate. You can draw circles, put the point in it exactly where you'd expect. I like it has good palm rejection. Let's test the tilt. Pretty good tilt. Yeah, impress. You have a, a singular replacement nib, but you know, for 20 pound, I still think it represents pretty good value overall. So if palm rejection, accuracy, and tilt are the things that you really care about, but you don't care about pressure sensitivity, then this could be a good stylus, a good option. And another option we have is the Xeron Stylus Pen at $19.99. And, well, I was looking to review it and you can see I've just broken it. And it's got a protection thing for the nib here and I think I've discovered why, because literally I dropped it from here on the screen like that. And now the nib just, it just isn't working. It's switched on. The tilt kind of works to a point, but then it, it just, it's already broken. So it's clear to me why they've got this on here, but really disappointing that it takes as little as that to actually damage and break it. I'm gonna unscrew it, try and put it back in. Let's see if this changes anything. But yeah, not a good start. Switch it on. No, it seems to have completely destroyed it. And you know, I've not dropped it from a height. I literally slipped out of my hand and fell on the screen like that. So I won't be recommending this stylus. It's hard to now test whether it, well, it seems to have palm rejection, great. You know, I'm presuming it has had tilt because it's given me the, the effect, but it's just not working now. So yeah, I won't be recommending that. And this stylus is called the Grineric. I'll move that. And yeah, basic stylus, another hexagonal design, very similar to the KXD one. Press it on, little blue light. It works, it's accurate. Pretty much as you'd expect. It follows the point of the, the stylus as you'd want. It has tilt. Hmm, the tilt is not brilliant on this actually. Let me give that a fair chance. Let me really push this and test it a bit more. It goes from there. And it's very kind of rapidly almost goes from one to the other. Let me just try this a few more times. So we've got the really kind of shading nib and then we'll try and drag that out and gradually tilt it differently okay yeah maybe then let's turn the opacity up so it's really on its side and i bring it over here it gradually gets more and more focused no that's fine um so yeah the tilt the palm rejection great working the accuracy working now this is £23.99 and yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good stylus. Not as cheap as some of the others. I think I prefer one or two of the others, but it's, you know, it's within the same ballpark of cost. But let's have a look what else you get in the box. It's got a USB-C, a singular nib. It's okay, it, it does the job. You're not gonna be disappointed if you spend, you know, you end up spending an extra four pound, an extra four dollars or whatever on this compared to the others. Maybe you prefer the hexagonal design, maybe that's gonna be something that works for you. It's pretty basic, it does the job, does everything that the others do just as well. So yeah, I could recommend this, certainly, but not over the others, but yeah, it's okay. So in conclusion, it's not really a fair contest because the Apple Pencil, and I'll need to pair it now because I unpaired it before, so I magnetically attach it, wait for the Little reading tells me what percentage it has. Another advantage that it has, it gives me that exact percentage that's left. It charges it from there, it pairs it from there, and it really has the advantage. It's super accurate. It has the palm rejection, the same, but it's, 
there's an instantly different feel. As soon as you are able to just change the pressure, changes the brush, and you change it back again, it, it's just a different category of stylus really, as soon as you have the pressure sensitivity. But if that is not so crucial to you, then my other options, I have to say, are this Quadrance Advanced Stylus, simply for the fact it has a little cap feels nice for one thing, but it has a little cap that gives you a backup option just in case it runs out of charge. And it's simply that alone. Because the majority of them, apart from the one that was really glitchy and the one that broke straight away, the majority of them do the basics pretty well. But this one simply won me over, does the basics pretty well, and it has a backup option there. And then, you know, in that vein, we also have the Penier, which is very basic but it allows you to use it as simply a backup option. So you can have your pen with your all times for your standard everyday writing on paper, but then you have a variety of different options depending on your specific need at the moment. Very basic, but actually it does quite a lot for that kind of 10 pound, $12 region. So yeah, if the 100 and $30, $140 pound is too steep for you, even in the Apple Pencil 1, which is like $100. If that's just too much and you don't need the pressure sensitivity, then I would consider, you know, look at the reviews. The link for this is down in the description. I don't know whether you can get it everywhere, but I'll certainly put the links for this down in the description. This is the Quadrance, sort of advanced stylus that you can get. And then the Penier. So depending on your level of need, you know, you're going to find a stylus that works. But let's let's be clear, the Apple Pencil does win hands down if you want the best experience of everything. It's just convenient, it attaches, it charges, it pairs. It does everything you're ever going to want it to need to do. Not an easy answer. Is there an alternative? It's better than it used to be. There's a lot more alternatives than there used to be, but really I'd say that the Apple Pencil, both one and two, are just really head and shoulders. They're the best stylus out there that I think you can use on a tablet. I think they really, they have nailed it. They have really got that down and got it perfected. And not to say they won't perfect it even more. There may be an Apple Pencil 3, and I shall definitely be looking out for that if and when that arrives. But for now, I think that's covered most of the things that I wanted to do in this video. I hope that's been useful. I hope that's given you an idea of whether you need an Apple Pencil or whether one of the cheaper alternatives might actually be useful for you. Please check out my other videos. I do a ton of painting tutorials as well as kind of product reviews here and there. Hit the thumbs up and the subscribe and the bell notification if you do want to catch future videos. And I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.